Although months ago the Obama administration announced that it would be arming the rebels in Syria, today those weapons shipments became official. The administration admitted that the CIA has been directly delivering arms to Syrian rebels for the last two weeks. Apparently the fact that these weapons may end up in the hands of al-Qaeda extremists just isn't concerning enough for our government. <laughs> Now, one woman who has repeatedly spoke out against U.S. involvement in Syria's civil war since the beginning is Mimi Al-Aham. Known as Syria Girl, Mimi has become a viral sensation for her passionate anti-war speeches. Now, in one video, she says that if Assad regime gives up its chemical weapons, it will be a grave mistake. I asked her why she believes this to be the case. In my case, I'm a Syrian nationalist, so... My country comes first, before government, before anything, and I'm always looking out for the interests of the country as a whole. And those weapons exist for a reason, and they are an answer to the fact that Israel developed chemical and nuclear weapons in the 60s. And they have signed the NPT, but they haven't ratified it, so that's all on record. Um, and the fact is now, the fact is, uh, two, t a decade ago, in 2004, um, the U.S. administration approached Assad and asked him to give up those chemical weapons. And I'm sure they made many assurances to him, which may be exactly the same assurances as they made to Gaddafi when he agreed to give up his chemical weapons. And we all know how that turned out. And we all know how um, Iraq turned out when Saddam gave up his chemical weapons as well. The U.S. made absolutely sure that using the United Nations that there was no hidden chemical weapons left in his arsenal before they invaded. So I don't see how giving up your deterrent or your strategic defense can actually prevent an attack it might actually ensure an attack or postpone it. Back in July, Russia delivered a report to the UN blaming the rebels, of course, for the March sarin attack in Aleppo. And the US has said that it has undeniable evidence that the August 21st chemical attack in Damascus was perpetrated by the Assad regime. Of course, the UN has, has yet to assign blame to either party. Obviously, both countries have their own agenda, as you just kind of outlined. Based on the evidence that you've seen, who do you think is behind these attacks? Well. I think the agenda is, is quite clear, you know, cue bono, who benefits? Um, it was either going to be the rebels who benefited from a U.S. strike or it was going to be Israel who benefited from disarming Syria. And even the head of the insurgents, the FSA, Salim Idris, said that the Mossad was all over Syria. You know, there's, there's third parties in Syria now. If you want to look at evidence, though, why not leave it to the United Nations? Why uh, try to prevent the United Nations from coming up with a answer before coming up with your own answer? And for that, we, we, we you know, it seems as though the United States is actually, uh, the United States administration actually doesn't really care about who did it, just so long as they gain what they've wanted all along, which is disarmament. I want to play the most bizarre line of all from Obama's serious speech on Tuesday to you. It's true that some of Assad's opponents are extremists. But al-Qaeda will only draw strength in a more chaotic Syria if people there see the world doing nothing to prevent innocent civilians from being gassed to death. So here's Obama saying not striking Syria would actually strengthen al-Qaeda. Does that logic make sense to you? <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, it's very Orwellian, you know, it's the reverse of the truth. Uh, we, we only need to look at recent history in Libya, you know, destroying the Libyan military only resulted in Al-Qaeda flags flying over courthouses. And in Syria, you know, he talks about some rebels are extremists. He didn't maybe use the word Al-Qaeda, but the U.S. administration themselves declared that Jabhat al-Nusra was al-Qaeda. And recently, uh, as recently as today, the BBC reported that the FSA, which are considered the moderate rebels, and Jabhat al-Nusra, which are considered the al-Qaeda rebels, were jointly raiding Malula, the Christian village uh, near Damascus. So the
and between Al Qaeda and the rebels and the line, the artificial line that he's drawing is is false. And I could go back also in Aleppo in Mina, in Meng Air Base, the, the same thing happened where the supposed moderate rebels that were vetted by the CIA, which now they've admitted they're arming, uh, fought alongside Jabhat al-Nusra and actually declared victory alongside these foreign al-Qaeda rebels. So um, the logic behind, oh, we have to strike because the chaos will create more al-Qaeda, <laughs> wouldn't uh, destroying the Syrian military create more chaos? <laughs> Great point. See, that, that's what we call logical thought. Unfortunately, Obama is treating us like we're children, that we don't have this kind of thought process, Mimi. And, of course, Putin responded to that speech in a New York Times op-ed today saying that, quote, it is extremely dangerous to encourage people to see themselves as exceptional, whatever the motivation. Do you agree with this assessment? And how do you think the concept of American exceptionalism is playing to this policy? You know, I think that the American people have great qualities. And for one thing, most of them have good hearts and good intentions. And anybody can see that. But I think that the point that Putin was trying to make, which was turned around in, in uh, the controlled media, was that, you know, everybody should be seen as equal. Nobody should be seen as in a super to anybody else or a parent to anybody else. The American government shouldn't believe that uh, or make its people believe that America has the right to attack or invade anybody. Um, and I think that point was rather missed in the U.S. media. How can the people here in this country, Mimi, support the Syrian people in their quest for revolution without getting involved in either side of this imperialist global chess mass match? Because we've already rather seen three years of war. It's interesting that many Syrians just don't seem to care anymore. They have to get on with their lives. You know, they're totally ignoring Obama's speeches. They're buying food. They're going to cafes. And that's the kind of strength that you gain after you know, a lot of hardship. Um, as for how people can help, um, I have a charity that I, am, um, I've, I can vet and I can be certain that it's not going to uh, promote any term, any part of the war effort. Uh, it's called the Syrian Relief Fund. I could provide you with a website for that. Actually, it's not my charity, but I know the people that run it, so I can be sure that uh, it's not part of the propaganda machine or anything like that. Um, otherwise, always I would say, you know, pressure the government of the U.S. to stop funding al-Qaeda insurgents illegally in a sovereign country and say enough is enough, you know, these wars are enough and it's a vicious cycle that keeps going and um, it has to stop. So that would be, you know, one of the major things that I, could, I would ask people to do. And, and it has to stop by the American people standing up to their government. We're the ones sponsoring this with our tax dollars. Syrian Relief Fund, we'll be sure to link to that in this video about section. Everyone check that out. See how you can help. Mimi Alaham, journalist and activist, always a pleasure to have you on.